We're almost at the end of the report, and now we're in the operating condition section. This section is very important and useful for industry analysis as it breaks down how businesses actually operate and the factors affecting them within this industry, allowing you to compare your borrower to the industry standard. Beginning with capital intensity, the chart at the top shows where this industry lies in terms of capital versus labor intensity and increasing or decreasing share of the economy. Here you can see that consumer electronics stores is labor intensive and declining in terms of market share of the economy. Looking at the opposite end, we'll see solar power again as a capital intensive and growing industry, a polar opposite of our current industry that we're looking at. Since the consumer electronics stores industry is declining, you may want to be more conservative when assessing the loan of this borrower. You may want to look at shortening the term of the loan, the amortization period of the loan, or using a lower loan to value to address the potential credit risk related to future repayment capacity. Going down, you can see that capital intensity is low, kind of like what we saw in the chart above, but this is expanded upon using the charts to the right over here. Here, you can see that capital intensity ratios for the consumer electronics stores industry hovers around 0.07 to 0.08, whereas for the economy as a whole, it's usually around 0.2. What this means is that for every $1 of wages, consumer electronics stores will pay $0.07 or $0.07 cents on capital investment. You can also see what they spend on for these capital expenditures. So over here, you can see that the capital investment is mainly in fixtures and fittings, as well as cash registers and point of sale systems. This is actually really important to note because this means that consumer electronics stores won't have much equipment in terms of collateral to secure a term loan. As well, since they're not really looking to purchase large amounts of equipment, a consumer electronics store is more likely going to be looking for an operating line of credit rather than a term loan as their financing needs are more related to managing working capital as opposed to capital asset purchases. Next, you'll see technology and systems. This section shows how technological change can disrupt the industry and is a great section for filling out the technological factors in your pestle analysis. This area breaks down the five factors that can affect technological disruption, that being ease of entry, innovation concentration, rate of innovation, market concentration, and rate of entry. If you want to see a description of how these affect disruption, you can look to the right over here. Here in the right up below, you can see that these factors combine to create an environment where entry trends are not a key threat of disruption, kind of like what we saw earlier where we saw that barriers to entry were at a medium level. However, technological trends such as reselling platforms, or the increasing availability of downloadable content have decreased demand for the physical items that are typically sold by industry operators in the consumer electronics stores industry. We'll also see that the level of technology change is medium. Most of this change is driven by e-commerce, as we've already found out from the rest of this report. Given this disruption, you may want to inquire about your borrower's strategy for managing e-commerce sales. After this, the report reviews revenue volatility. Here, we can see that the revenue volatility for this industry is at a medium level. On the right, you can see a chart which plots annualized revenue growth and revenue volatility. Consumer electronics stores are in the stagnant section of this chart, where there isn't too much volatility but there is a decreasing level of annualized revenue growth. One of the large factors affecting revenue volatility is the discretionary nature of products in the industry, which means that demand is influenced by variations in disposable income and consumer confidence in the economy. However, there are some moderating factors on revenue volatility, 
such as the relatively short replacement cycle for these products. For example, we can note that cell phone owners typically replace their phones every 18 months, providing a stable stream of cash flow in the long term. Below this subsection are sections on regulation and policy and industry assistance. These sections talk about how government regulations can affect the industry and how the government may assist the industry through subsidies or other benefits. The level of regulation for this industry is light and steady. If it was instead medium or high, you may want to inquire if your borrower has any mitigating strategies for government interference. Conversely, if industry assistance was high, you may want to inquire how your borrower will take advantage of such assistance. Finally, we have the key statistics section of the report. This section shows off all of the data that was used in the report. As mentioned, this data is downloadable into Excel and can be used for benchmarking. Near the bottom of this section are some key industry ratios. And just below that are industry financial ratios. You'll want to pay extra attention to this section. You'll likely be using these ratios a lot when it comes to benchmarking your borrower's company against the industry. As you can see here, the key banking ratios are covered in this section, such as the current ratio for liquidity and the days ratios for working capital items. For coverage, we have an interest coverage ratio, and for leverage, we have debt to net worth, just to name a couple. There are also some operating ratios that you may find useful. Further, you can see that the ratios are broken down in a couple of ways by annual time periods on the left and by company size on the right. This helps you do both trend analysis comparisons along with a more aligned comparison of the size of your borrower to the segment of the industry. For example, if you have a borrower that does between 10 to $50 million of revenue per year, then you can refer to the ratios in the medium column. 